Welcome back to Dr. Chao's YouTube channel. This is Dr. Chao from Howard County Board of Education. In this channel, I'm going to interview high school graduates from Howard County Public School System. I want them to share their experience, their challenge, their achievements, and their advice for our incoming high school students. This YouTube channel will focus on student voice and student experience. I hope this interview will help you both our parents and our students to navigate our high school life. Today, we're going to interview Abigail Furman. She graduated from Howard High in 2020. She will join University of Maryland College Park. Her major is English, Language, and Literature. Hi, welcome, Abigail. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you have a self-introduction? Yeah, so um, my name is Abigail Furman, and I graduated Howard High School and I'm going to University of Maryland as an English language and literature major. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's an excellent school and I'm excited to talk about my high school experience and share some of what I've learned. Thank you, Abigail. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. So my first question for you, what was your biggest challenge in your senior year? How do you overcome that? So one of my biggest challenges in my senior year was balancing an internship along with college applications and coursework. So the internship ended up being a much bigger um, obligation than I thought it would be because the commute was rather long. So it took up a lot of my day. I get home a lot later than I used to. And on top of homework and AP classes, I also had to get the college applications done. So it was really hard to figure out how to manage all of that and still enjoy my senior year a little bit. So one of the things that I did is I started to have a calendar and make a schedule, which I never did before, but I wish I'd done sooner because it's a really, really helpful thing. So I'd make sure I wrote down any homework and I'd make sure I wrote down everything I need to do at work, make sure I had it all organized so I didn't forget anything. And I would always try to have at least an hour at the end of the day after I'd done everything to kind of relax because I think it's really essential to not get caught up in everything you have to do because you will become overwhelmed and it's very tiring. And senior year should be a positive experience. So it was really valuable to learn how to balance that. Mm -hmm. I see. So do you have like a handwritten calendar or a Google calendar? <laughs> I do it handwritten because when it's a Google Calendar, I can't always get to my phone at um, my internship. I can't have my phone. Mm -hmm. So it's just easier to be able to write it down. I see. Interesting. I think there are not so many people use a handwritten calendar. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think that's a great, great advice. How to manage your time very well. Make sure you have time to re relax. That's critical for, the, for your mental health, critical for you to really plan out well, right? Yeah. And it's, I think it's easier said than done. You start the calendar and then it can sometimes feel like one more thing to remember to do, but if you can get into the group, <laughs> it can be a really valuable resource. I see. Thanks for sharing that. So my next question for you, in your whole four year high school experience, so what was your biggest challenge? How do you overcome that? So in my sophomore and junior year, I took a class in aerospace engineering. So it was a project lead the way class that combined um, the first year was the first two years of project lead the way. And then the second year was digital um, electronics, engineering design and development, and then the actual aerospace course. So in combining those classes that usually take a year individually, it was a very heavy course load. And it was doing stuff that was kind of out of my element because I am much more an English person than a math and science person. So that required a lot of work. Ended up being something that for a while I felt like I'd bit off more than I could chew. But in the end, it taught me some really valuable skills, especially teamwork and finding resources outside of the class. Sometimes, 
your teacher will do everything they can and you still will be a little bit lost, never hesitate to, you know, look around yourself because the internet is a great resource. And um, again, the teamwork was really the best experience from that class. I made some amazing friends and though we all kind of had different interests despite being united by an interest in aerospace, we all got along really well and they taught me some really valuable skills. I see. Thanks for sharing that. So it seems you choose something you probably at the beginning not very comfortable, but eventually you really overcome that. So level the yeah. not comfortableness and then made it through. Yeah. So can you share one very unique academic experience? For example, maybe one class or one project or one seminar beyond your project lead the way. So I think one of the most interesting things I did was within the project lead the way class, which was the engineering design and development. It is, um, it was our final project and we had to either create an invention or innovate on a pre-existing invention. So that was a very high stakes kind of project because it was a lot of our final quarter grade and it was our actual final exam grade. And it really taught me how to work under pressure. And we, um, we created a device that helps people who are blind or visually impaired to find lost items. So it's basically a tracker that makes a loud noise and they can follow it. So that was really neat because I got to meet some incredible people who helped us test the product. Um, it taught me some great presentation skills because we had a bunch of engineers come in and we presented for them our projects. So that was probably my most interesting class experience. Mm -hmm. I also would say that my internship was a very interesting experience. Um, so I had an internship with the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. So that um, was really awesome because I got to see what it's like to have a job and be in the real world, especially in that kind of environment, which is something I would like to pursue. And it is a very unique and different environment, but it's a place full of a lot of amazing people. And I learned some skills I think I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't done it. I see. That's probably one reason you're not able to bring your cell phone or even yes. <laughs> wearable. It is a security violation. <laughs> I see. Okay. So the next question for you is about cyberbullying. Have you ever experienced that or maybe your friend experienced that? How do you or your friends overcome that? So I have kind of a limited social media presence. I only just downloaded Instagram during the pandemic because I had some free time. But I do have friends who use it a lot. They have experienced some negative comments. I think that the best way to deal with that is you just have to be confident in yourself. The world is unfortunately full of negativity and sometimes people are going to say mean things to you, especially in high school. So I think you need to take the time to remember that you are a good person and that you are worth it and that people can be cruel, but you can't let it get to you. And that is a hard thing to learn in high school. It's hard because people are judgmental in high school. But if you can learn it and you can remember that and remember to think positively, you can really endure a lot of things. Thanks for sharing that. So we need to be strong in ourselves. At the same time, I want to remind our audience, if you ever experience cyberbullying or your friends experience that, please report to the school system. We want to make sure you are getting support from our public school system. We have a very robust and uh, solid framework to handle cyberbullying. So I just want to make sure you know there's the resources available for you. To and next question for you, can you share some extracurriculum activities? So I ran cross country for three years of high school. I was admittedly not very good at it, but it really taught me how to concentrate. When you're running a race, it's easy to let your mind wander and think to yourself, oh, my legs hurt, oh, I'm tired. I don't wanna do this anymore. And so you kind of have to train yourself to think, okay, well, I'm just going to keep going. And that was something 
that I could apply to other aspects of my life. So I definitely really recommend running cross country. I think it's a great experience. It's a great way to get in shape. And it really teaches you how to have that kind of positive mindset. I see. So are you still running? Yeah, I still run um, on my own time. So do you run marathon, kind of half marathon? <laughs> that would be impressive. That would be pretty cool if I could run a marathon. <laughs> um, I run 5Ks. Mm, I see. I personally, I like running as well. And uh, I, I always want to run a marathon, but I haven't tried it yet. So I think that's on my, my radar. Maybe one day. The farthest I ever went was 10 miles. It was a mistake. We got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then I realized per biking is easier. You can run, <laughs> have a longer distance, but it's still, it's just much easier. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice to share with our incoming high school students based on your personal experience? How to, how to prepare for the high school? I think that the most important thing you can do in high school is find a balance. You're gonna feel a lot of pressure to get the perfect grades, to do every extracurricular under the sun, to have those internships, to bulk up your resume, you know, to be this shining college applicant and that is good, you should work hard, but there is a limit. Don't burn out, remember to have fun. High school is a good experience, especially if you remember to leave time for yourself. And I think the other thing, I'm sure a lot of high school, incoming high schoolers have heard this, but it's hard to remember. That test, that quiz is not gonna matter in the future. <laughs> You'll, in the moment, you'll sit there and think, oh my gosh, how could I have gotten this grade? What am I gonna do? And it's really hard to get out of your head, but it's just, mm -hmm. you know, I was in that situation a few months ago and now that I'm done, I can really look back and say, wow, it, people were telling the truth when they said that, it doesn't matter, it's, it's gonna be okay. I see, so just there's so many quiz and so many tests, right? Just one fail and one failure should be fine and don't worry too much about that and continue to move on. So that's very helpful because I, I heard from some parents and students before, they worried about so much about one test they failed or there's some problem, get an A, they worry about oh, what happens. I think that totally should be fine. You don't need to get all A's, right? And uh, there's so many aspects you can improve yourself and can demonstrate your great students. Yeah, I think it's easy to get swept up in it, um, especially my school had a very competitive mindset when it came to grades. You know, people were trying to outdo each other. And if you kind of fall into that, you're just going to get too overwhelmed. You have to remember that you can only do the best that you can do. And if you, you do that, it's going to be okay. You'll get into a good college. You'll have opportunities to make it up. You just have to accept it and move on to whatever's next. Thanks for sharing that. So my next question for you, why you choose Maryland? Why you choose your major, English, language, and literature? It's a long ma major name. <laughs> yeah. I chose University of Maryland because I think it's in a really great location. I think being so near to Baltimore and DC is gonna provide great opportunities not only with speakers who will come to the school, but with internships and just opportunities. I chose English language and literature because I think that communication has become underrated. We focus a lot on STEM and STEM is incredible. I think it's a great thing to major in, but it's important to be able to communicate with people and to be able to portray knowledge in a way that is understandable, accurate, and relatable. And I think that that's starting to slip. So I want to learn how to communicate well, to learn how to use words to benefit others. And that kind of, what I want to do after college is hopefully work for the State Department. And that kind of falls into, I believe that in the past few years, our country's diplomacy has declined. And I think that we are starting to realize that 
that was a mistake. And I think the communication, strong communication is going to be more essential than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And I want to try to be a part of that change. I see. Thank you for sharing that. I, I agree with you. So great communication is essential to really get the message across and build the relationship and build a friendship, right? Not just inside the company, but around the world as well. So next question for you is, do you have any advice for HCPSS? So where they can improve, where they can change? I think that in the context of COVID-19, Howard County needs to remember that it, its primary job is to support its students. Online learning is going to be very different. The administration, just the entire system needs to remember that you can't just support the kids academically, you need to support them socially. As an incoming freshman, typically a big aspect of your year is you meet new people, you make new friends, you start to learn interests through those people. And it's a really big part of high school and that will be affected by online learning, it will not be the same. So I think that Howard County needs to remember that academic support is not enough. They need to encourage these kids coming in socially and make sure that they're still making friends, they're still expanding their horizons, they're still getting new opportunities outside of academics. Thank you for sharing that. I, I agree with you. So it's make it more, much more difficult to really support our students beyond the acad academics, right? how to put a student together, how to build a supporting network because we're not able to see each other very easily and we even don't have a support to play together, right? And so definitely a much bigger challenge than before. I hope the school system will find a way to support our students, especially for students who are in the transition, either from elementary school to middle school or from middle school to high school. So yes. this is a, it's a big change for them. Thanks for sharing that. So do you have some closing remarks? Um, I think I'd just say to any high schoolers, whatever grade you're going into right now, it's going to be different. It's not going to be what you expected. And though that is a shame, you can still make it a very positive experience. So just keep a positive attitude and don't be afraid to try new things. Now more than ever, you have to vouch for yourself, look for opportunities, you know, be your biggest fan, make sure that you're expanding your horizons because things are not gonna be as accessible as they used to be. And though that is frustrating, it is not the end all of everything. Thing. That's something that you can get around if you put in just a little bit of extra effort. I see. I use the word like the sky will not fall, right? <laughs> just, it's, it's also a little bit, even if the pandemic is kind of is unpredictable, we yeah. don't know where it would end. But let's take a step back to think about okay, how to best support ourselves and how to really move forward when things are kind of getting better and better. Eventually, everything is controlled and we can come back to classroom. Yeah. Thank you very much, Abigail. I really appreciate you taking time to, uh, to speak with me. For our audience, thanks for tuning back to Dr. Chao's YouTube channel. In this channel, I will continue to interview our high school graduate. I hope their voice and their experience will help us and guide us, both the parents and students, to navigate through the high school life. Thank you very much, Abigail. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.